14th Army's drive to Mandalay, once the capital and then the second city in Burma, has been a magnificent feat of arms. Incidentally, of course, their victorious advance continues to free large numbers of Burmese people, some of whom are here seen coming through our lines from the battle area. Whatever the Burmese may have thought about the Japanese invasion of their land, they've had more than enough of the Japs by now. Evidence of what it means to be ruled by the Japs was all too clear in one village where three men showed the marks of the tortures they had undergone. An officer is seen talking to the people of the village who learn that the rule of law and justice now takes the place of the rule of terror and torture. The villagers understand and, in their impassive way, applaud the news. These pictures, taken just before Mandalay's capture, show units passing a pagoda on the road to the city. They also show the troops enjoying a Burmese entertainment in between battles, so to speak. Burmese dancers were one item on the programme of what they call a pue, or variety show. Here, at any rate, with all due respect to Ensa, local talent sufficed. Burmese boxing proved equally popular. They have their own local rules, of course, and it's an affair of slap, kick and scratch. First to draw blood is the winner. A Burmese champion presently challenged all comers. He was taken on by an Indian havildar from the Punjab, who in a short, sharp bout made the champ's nose bleed and won the battle. There was also a display of Chunlin, a kind of Burmese football, so skillful that it may well repay our own football talent scouts to visit Burma. But the 14th Army doesn't often get shows of this sort. Lord Louis Mountbatten, in a recent broadcast to his forces, described the sort of show they've been putting on for the benefit of the Japs. You have fought right through the monsoon, giving the Japanese no chance to reorganize themselves. You have fought and marched and flown over some of the most difficult country in the world, parts of which, before this war, have been visited only by the most intrepid explorers. The recent crossing of the Irrawaddy alone, at points where it is six times as wide as the Thames at Waterloo Bridge, is an epic achievement, and it is only one of many. You have done all these things against the background of what are perhaps the most difficult lines of communication in any theatre of war. It is as though you had fought your way into London with no railway nearer than Glasgow and having to build your own roads across mountains in between. These great land advances have only been made possible by the untiring efforts of the airmen. They have not only beaten the enemy in the air, affording almost complete immunity from air attack and blasted his strong points on the ground, but they have evacuated the sick and the wounded and have kept up supplies from the railroad bases to spearheads thrust against the enemy. To all of you, in every arm and every service, British, American, Indian, African and Chinese, I send my grateful thanks. I look forward with confidence to even greater victories.